What if I told you that right now, there are founders building six-figure businesses by creating micro SaaS apps for platforms you already know? Today, I'm sitting down with Sneer Alayoff, a non-technical founder who followed my stair-step approach to go from dropshipping and selling eBooks to growing an app portfolio for Monday.com's marketplace to $30,000 in monthly recurring revenue in less than a year. In the next few minutes, you'll learn how Sneer identified and validated these specific opportunities, the exact playbook he used to get his first 10 customers, and the key strategies he used to take his apps from zero to more than $30,000 a month. Before we get started, I wanna say thanks to Monday.com for sponsoring this video. If you've thought about building a SaaS, but you weren't sure where to start, you won't wanna miss this chat. Let's dive in. Sneer, you've built a handful of Monday apps. Can you give us a quick overview of the portfolio that you've built? Yes, of course. Um, so we have around uh, four apps on Monday. Uh, we have an AI assistant. We have a couple of call automations, uh, app that does a couple of call automations that uh, are really useful in Monday. We have an integration with Google Sheets, and we also have um, an app that basically allows you to add the same item to multiple boards on Monday. So those are the four apps that we currently have on the marketplace. I get emails pretty much every week asking me how to find these kinds of ideas, right? Or these kinds of marketplace opportunities. Can you help me understand how you came up with these ideas? Yeah, of course. Um, so the first one, the AI assistant was really just a project that we shipped for the Monday hackathon. So Monday hosted the hackathon for developers to build some cool AI features, AI apps um, that integrate with Monday. So that was the first one. We came up with the idea in a day, build it and um, just uh, launched it. It was really uh, quick and dirty. And um, that's how we uh, shipped that one. Um, the second app, I would say the Google Sheets one was um, really came out of a need that I had and something that I thought was really, um, my intuition said that there should be an integration between Monday to Google Sheets. Uh, so I kind of built it out of my own need and I also assumed that other users on Monday have that need. Um, so that's how the second one uh, was developed. The third one was actually an app. So we took inspiration from a couple of apps that already were on Monday, uh, which were more about uh, creating some more creative automations inside the platform. And uh, the fourth one, so that was the app that we actually validated the, uh, the idea and found that this was indeed a need in the market. So let's dig into the same item on multiple boards, because it sounds like that's the one you did the most validation for. How, you said you, you got on Zoom calls or something. How many people did you talk to? And did you do like pre-purchases where people paid you in advance? Or did you get a few yeses and then go off building? Yes, that's a, that's a funny story, actually, because uh, we went on, uh, on Facebook groups and just saw some people asking, hey, how do I build that setup for my business on Monday? How do I do this workflow on Monday? And um, I just told them, hey, I'm a Monday implementer. I can set the whole Monday account for you. While I was not really, that, that wasn't what I was doing at that time. But I just wanted to get some feedback from people. So uh, I got them on a call. I asked, okay, uh, show me what you're looking to get done. And uh, this need, like they, they were able to explain what they're looking to do. And there are some solutions inside Monday that allow you to do it. But um, in their mind, how the workflow they had in mind was supposed to, to go was really to have the same item in multiple boards. Um, so I got, I think, like five interviews like that. Uh, it, it's, it was an interview from my point of view for them. They were receiving like a consultation for their Monday setup. Beyond those interviews, we also looked at Facebook groups and we looked at the Monday community forums and we saw that this topic is really, is really hot. Like people are actually asking for it. It's been out there for a while. And yeah, this need uh, is still unmet. So this is how we decided to build the solution for it. Got it. So you didn't ask for money. You just vetted that people really needed it. And there was a lot of conversation around it. Is that the idea? Yeah, exactly. And um, I guess we didn't ask for money up front. We built it in a very cheap way and we just launched it. So it was really quick to develop it. Uh, we did invest a lot of resources into building that product. And yeah, we just shipped a very lean version of what's, what it could be. Like we, all of the features that we have today were not even close to, to what we shipped initially. So that was kind of the validation to see if people are willing to pay for it. We just built it, launched it, it was very lean. And yeah, when we saw that people are willing to pay for it, even with a few couple features that we had uh, when it first launched. Do you remember how many weeks it took you to get to MVP? 
I think it's a, it was honestly developed in around two weeks. Wow. Um, yeah, it took us two weeks, but uh, there, there's also a um, phase where you need to get approved by Monday. So we had uh, a couple of other weeks uh, going through that um, um, review process. Uh, so I guess in a month or so, uh, we were already live uh, with this uh, product and the sales came in the first week. So, yeah. Well, I, I mean, it sounds like you said you kept it simple. I mean, you must have kept it really simple to, to you know, be able to launch something in two weeks. And you're not a developer, right? So how did you possibly, usually it's the developer who goes and, you know, puts in 10, 12 hours and can launch something in two weeks, even something simple. As, an, as a non-technical founder, in essence, how were you able to manage to get an app built in such a short time? I actually ran a web development agency. So I had a couple of uh, developers on my team. Um, I just decided to take one of my developers um, and told him, hey, I have an idea for, you know, let's try to build a couple of Monday apps. Um, let's see if that can, uh, this can be something cool. So I just took my developer. I just explained the idea. I went over the documentation as well to kind of see what could be done. Even though I'm not a developer, I could kind of understand um, what what can be done with it. And I just told him, okay, um, if I get this right, you can do that and that and that. So let's try to build something that can do that and that and that. Um, like th those were the instructions. We didn't have any um, product requirement documents. It was honestly like a 10 minute call. And he came uh, back to me and showed me that it's actually working. Um, so that's how uh, I went about it, even though I'm not a developer myself. Yeah, but you had that experience running an agency. That helps a lot. So you have this product built, this MVP that you got out in a shockingly uh, you know, short amount of time after doing a bit of validation, but not overdoing it. You know, it's not like you spent months validating or months building. It sounds like it was a couple weeks, couple weeks. You have this built. How do you launch it? Like, how do you let people know that this is out there? So first of all, the I think because the, the need was... Uh was really high. Um, I just uh, posted that everywhere that that were like a Monday community. There it was like uh, Facebook groups. It was the Monday community forums. Well, actually, the, the places where I went to validate the idea were the exact same places where I like where I advertised it. Uh, we could say um, I simply created Facebook uh, posts and um, created. Uh, I replied to people on those uh, on the Monday community forum where they asked for this feature. I, I just reply to them directly and like quoted them and said, Hey, this feature is now available. Check the app marketplace. And this is how I got the, the first traffic. Um, yeah. And uh, I think because it was, uh, even though it was lean, it was kind of good. It was kind of working. Um, and we, uh, we were able to like, I chose the categories in the marketplace in a, in kind of a smart way, I could say. And I, I chose like the categories in, inside the marketplace where uh, we could, potentially get more traffic. So that was also like a kind of small thing that we that we did to get more traffic in the first um, in the first month. Yeah, something I often say is when you're trying to validate an idea, if you can't get any potential customers to talk to you now, how will you do that once you have a product? And it sounds like part of your validation was just seeing that a lot of people were willing to talk to you. I know you were talking about being, a, you know, you were saying you were an implementer and all that, but still there was a lot of conversation already. And and I think it's it's less about the tech and it's more about the need and the pain point that you uncovered, right? Yeah, that, that's, the, that's exactly it. In a minute, Sneer and I chat about how that initial launch went and the exact strategies he used to get to that $30,000 in MRR. But first, I want to reiterate why I think first-time founders should build an app or an extension on top of an existing platform like Monday.com. As Sneer mentioned, Monday already has a huge audience. In fact, they have over 225,000 customers across more than 200 industries. This means he didn't have to focus on customer education and marketing. 94% of Monday.com's large paying accounts have at least one app installed, which is why I think there's a lot of opportunity to build a SaaS on top of the platform. If you aren't familiar, Monday.com is a multi-product platform that runs all core aspects of work. Business owners and teams of all sorts use it to streamline their work using their work management, CRM, service, and dev products. If you want to build a product like Sneer, the team at Monday.com has put together a great ebook that lays out their core user groups, the job titles they'll often have, their pain points, and use cases for the platform. It's a treasure trove of customer research laid out for you, and you can get it for free. To get your copy, head over to the link below, fill out the form, and sign up for a developer account. 
Thanks to Monday.com for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to our conversation so we can hear about Sneer's growth strategies. So you've launched and you've let people know that this app exists. What was the initial response to launching that MVP in terms of revenue? Yeah, um, so the first month, I think we did around 1.5K. The second month was an increase to 7K. It was really going, oh. uh, yeah. And the third month was already like 17K, something like that. Uh, those wow. those were the numbers. The jump was really high from month to month in the first few months because the need was really, was really high. Um, and again, um, I mean, this is kind of a gray area, but you know, uh, when I launched it, I said all of the features, like the dream version of the product, that was kind of the, the message that I was trying to, to convey to those users. So a lot of people installed and then they found like some of the features um, are still in development. But for me, it was like, it, it, like if I can't sell like the dream version of this, then like the, I, I couldn't validate. So the launch was kind of the validation uh, um, mixed with the, with the actual launch. Right. Right. And it sounds like you also had word of mouth, like were people telling other folks about the tool? Yeah. Um, so it got uh, really popular among the Monday uh, community and the um, Monday forums. So yeah, users uh, were really um, sharing this app with their, uh, with their friends. Uh, a lot of Monday implementers that were really installing those uh, workflows for, uh, for their clients uh, found this app and um, started sharing it as well. Um, and yeah, we got a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, traction, um, through word of mouth. And after you launched, you had good growth the first couple months, but y you mentioned offline that you really dove in to having support as a competitive advantage. And I think that's something I want to call out here because folks feel like sometimes if they're going to be able to build a marketplace app, um, that it's more set it and forget it. But you, you didn't just put it out there promote it and then, oh, look, it's just growing, right? Yeah, support have been, uh, the, I would say, the biggest uh, growth engine that we had. Um, so we simply add like a chat widget inside the app, nothing too fancy. Um, and yeah, you just started uh, speaking with us. And um, while some of them uh, were asking about technical um, bugs or struggles that they had with the product, which is also good feedback for us to understand like what doesn't work uh, as good as we uh, want to. So a lot of the users came and just uh, asked, hey, can this product do one, two, three? Can it do this extra um, um, feature? Uh, and we got a lot of ideas from our users and we knew how to prioritize the roadmap based on, this, uh, based on those conversations. And I was, I was basically taking all of those conversations uh, myself and I really got to understand what the market wants, like how it's supposed to look like, what are the most important features that we must ship as soon as possible. Uh, and yeah, it was really helpful and um, highly recommend anyone who's building their own SaaS. Um, participate in the support, add support that is easy to use uh, with the chat. Um, you can always automate it later, but if you participate in those conversations, you will really understand your users and understand uh, what should be built next. Got it. So being involved in support and really providing high quality support was not only a competitive advantage that it sounds like people were impressed by and were, that was probably part of your word of mouth is that people like use this tool, the, you know, the developers of it are really uh, friendly and knowledgeable and helpful, but it also helped guide the, the roadmap to help you continue to grow. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, when I, uh, when I think about other apps that I um, installed on Monday to kind of see how they're doing things, I didn't see anyone offering chat support inside the app. Mm. Um, and our level of support was really beyond what the market expected. That It was really just by itself, just by having like someone to speak with um, right when you use the app was a huge uh, advantage. People uh, told us up front, like, uh, I chose you, even though your app is kind of doing what the other, the, what one of the competitors is doing, um, it shows you because their support is um, exceptional. Right. And so in, in conversations we've had, you've talked about four things that you focused on to really help grow this app. And one you've already mentioned in this interview, which is you did stuff that didn't scale to get initial traction, right? You had conversations, you went to forums, and then you went back and you posted like that doesn't scale infinitely, but you, it got you that first month or two of growth. You've also uh, talked offline about how you really focused on optimizing your listing in the monday.com app store. Can you help me understand you know, what the thought process is there? So when it comes to optimizing the listing, um, 
think you should keep in mind two things. First is the message that you convey that people will actually read and also how the algorithm will read what you're writing and how you're um, posting and uh, structuring your, your listing. Um, what I decided to do, even though the app um, might not be directly related, for example, for emails, I added in the backend keywords emails because I saw that if I go and type something into the search bar, they suggest email. So I just decided to go with those keywords um, to get the traction, to get the attention of, uh, of users. So that was kind of uh, the one thing that we did there. And we also invested into having um, a very good uh, expanded video in the, in the listing itself. So users will be able to land on the page, understand what it does, what are the benefits. Um, you can also have there, there is a long text that you can put on the listing, uh, especially in Monday. But um, I, I doubt that anyone is actually getting this huge chunk of uh, text. So try to use um, images or video to convey uh, what your app can do and uh, why, um, how it's going to help your users. Yeah, and this is the thing that folks should learn if they're going to build for an app marketplace or an app store is that each of them ranks and, and, and searches a little differently. And so you need to learn enough about how that algorithm works in order to, you know, figure out how to get your more towards the top of, you know, of the searches, so to speak, or of the listings. So that, that was two things you did. Third thing you did, which you've already mentioned was you continued to evolve the product, right? You haven't let it go stagnant. You've built features based on customer requests that comes back to the, you know, the support thing earlier. I bet folks think they can set it and forget it and kind of abandon, abandon an app. And it's just, it's not going to do very well over time. You will get overtaken. Um, so I want to set that expectation. But the last thing is it sounds like you've uh, asked your customers for reviews in the app mm -hmm. store. Talk us through that. Yeah, um, so it was uh, really obvious for me in the first um, when we first launched that we must get uh, the attention and we must get some um, clicks. We need we need to do something, uh, and reviews are I think the best way to uh, to go about it. Like if someone sees two apps, one of them has no reviews, the other one has one hundred reviews. At least it will it will start by checking the one with the reviews and see what they're all about. So um, in the first uh, few months of the app. Each user that I got on a call with them to do like an onboarding or even a customer support call if something didn't work, I was straightforward in asking them for a review. I was uh, sometimes I was even uh, uh, telling them, okay, you need to click here and then you click here and then you click on the five stars to first uh, a review. Um, most of them will would give you that review. Like th this is honestly how they would rate your app, but you know people are just. Uh, I don't want to say lazy, but it just, you know, no one stops their day to post a review. So sometimes you need to actually take them by the hand and, um, yeah, kind of push them into giving you that review. And I think this is a huge advantage that we now have in the marketplace. We have a really big amount of reviews. Um, and that, um, that also helps in getting attention and also helps in, you know, kind of keeping competitors away because who wants to compete with an app with so many reviews? Yeah. Well, thanks so much, Sneer, for being open and spending the time to share with uh, the MicroConf audience today. If folks want to follow you, they can find you on LinkedIn. We'll link that up uh, here in the description. Or you're inside MicroConf Connect, which is our online community for SaaS founders. Thanks again for joining me. Thanks, Rob. If you're looking to build a profitable micro SaaS, make sure you check out the resources at the link below. We'll also include it in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.